Well, we're at an interesting lesson for trig. Um, all right, so we have these special triangles, the 30 degree, 60 degree right triangle, and the 45, 45 right triangle. And in trig, it is not unusual at all to be asked, at least in school, like it's super, con like I like to teach more for the application end of things, like what if you actually used math in a job, how you would use it. However, you do have to go through your schooling to get there if you end up using this math. And all of these things, I can almost guarantee you that if you take uh, math classes while you're in college, you're going to be asked to give all, of, be able to give all of these exactly and by memory. And exact means, when you see the word exact in math, that means you can't round, which means basically your calculator won't help you. Now this is, looks like a lot of stuff. And I had to go through this too, right, learn all this stuff. And I know sometimes what people do is they give you a unit circle, and all of this information is on the unit circle. And the unit circle is very handy, except what if nobody gives you one? then the unit circle doesn't help you. So we will talk about the unit circle. It has its uses. It helps us understand some things. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to remember this stuff possibly without anybody giving you anything, including the unit circle. So you see all this information? The way I like to teach it, because this is how I think of it, I want to take all this and try to condense it down into the least amount I got to remember as possible because, you know, the less clutter that's up there, the better. So believe it or not, you see all this information? If you just memorize these two facts, so that's two out of these 18. Sine of 30 degrees is a half, and the tangent of 45 degrees is one. If you memorize those two, I'm going to show you how you can get every one of these. Every one of these. All you got to know is these two things and know what to do with them. Okay? So this is handy. Like off the top of my head, well, I, I kind of do know what they are. But uh, it's kind of like eh, I'd want to make sure. So I, I actually use this kind of often. Well, let's get to it. Start with this one. The way to use that one piece of information is, see that? Let's draw a right triangle that's got a 30 degree angle in it. Now sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that means this would be one and this would be two. Well look, all I gotta do is use the Pythagorean theorem and I don't have to memorize the other side, I can calculate the other side. Let's just call this x for now. 1 squared plus x squared is 2 squared, so 1 plus x squared is 4, x squared is 3, so x is the square root of 3. Now I'm sure you remember this is like ringing a bell from geometry, right, in algebra 2 or whatever, but do you see how I didn't have to remember that? If I just remember this one thing, I can create this triangle, and if I have the triangle, I can fill in every one of those just by looking at the picture. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And these are simply the reciprocals. So I'm going to, whoa. Opposite over adjacent. My bad. All right, now we do have an issue here. You can't leave it like that for, and get full credit. So back in, I don't know where, probably Algebra 1, you learn how to get the radical out of the basement. So if I multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3, that would be root 3 over 3. So if this was a test, you wouldn't want to leave it like that. That's not wrong. It's just not... I don't know, I don't want to call it simplified, but it's not put in a proper form. So this is what we want for tangent. Now these are the reciprocals, so the cosecant is the sine flipped over, 
So that's two over one or just two. Secant is this one flipped over. Well, we ran into the same trouble, right? So if this had a two there, So this would actually be our final answer. And for cotangent, what I would do is, remember where we started from this? Notice that if you flip that over, the radical's not in the basement anymore. So that's good to go. Now notice, I memorized this one. From that, I drew this picture. I found my missing site. The whole point here is, if you have to take a test and you're not given any reference materials and you gotta do this stuff, this is how you can get it all out of your brain. If you don't remember all this stuff, all I, all I knew was this one thing and I knew what to do with it and I could get all that information. Now look, this is kind of a two for one deal. If this is 30 degrees and that's a right angle, what is this angle? That would be 60. So I can actually use that same picture to fill in all of these. All I gotta do is look from this angle. So the sine would be root 3 over 2. The cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. The tangent would be opposite over adjacent. And these are all the reciprocals. So i got to flip this over. That's the same math we did here. 2 root 3 over 3. i got to flip this one over. And i got to flip this one over. Well, doggone it. I'm sorry, I keep messing this up. Tangent is root 3 opposite over adjacent. If you caught that while I was going, good job. Uh, I, I, I'll catch up to you eventually, right? So let's see, I flipped this one over, the radical is on the bottom, and I fixed it. This one just flips over nicely. This one would become 1 over root 3 but we're not supposed to leave it like that. That would be the same math here. So look, not only did this one fact give me all the 30s, it also gives me all the 60s by looking at the picture. The picture is a huge help. All right, now this one's different. Um, that's not in this triangle. So let's check that out. Tangent of 45 is 1. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And you go, that's not a fraction. Well, now it is. 1 over 1 is still 1, right? So if I make a right triangle with a 45 degree angle, by the way, that would also be 45 degrees, but let's just look from, try not to look at both, let's just look from this 45 degree angle. Opposite over adjacent is 1. So all I need is this. 1 squared plus 1 squared is x squared. 1 plus 1 is x squared. Uh, 2 is x squared. So this must be the square root of 2. Well, now I can fill in everything, right? So from here, the sign is 1 over root 2. We're not supposed to leave it like that. That would turn into root 2 over 2. Cosine would be not opposite but adjacent, but those are the same numbers. And then these are the reciprocals. So the reciprocal 1 is still 1. Uh, if you look at it in the original form, if I flip that over, that would just be root 2, and so would this. So, there's 18 things that one day or another you will be probably asked if you keep taking math classes. It'll say, give the exact values. And exact means you can't round, which means you got to do it like this. You can't plug this in your calculator. You got to leave it as a square root. That's what exact means. Well, let me tidy this up a little bit so you can have a nice screenshot if you want. We'll get rid of all the simple, the middle stages. Um, back 
That looks good. Okay, so these are the keys, right? This gives you this triangle, that gives you that, and it lets you fill them all in. Um, I'll flat out tell you while you're working remotely, there's no way I can make sure you're not looking at stuff while you're taking a test. Just remember, you know, this is not the end, right? You're going to take other math classes. Odds are one day you'll have to take tests sitting in a classroom again where the teacher can see you and they'll, you're not allowed to look stuff up and you got to know this. And I just showed you how you can do this with minimal pain. Yes, that's a lot of information, but you really only have to memorize two facts and then know how to unpack them. And that gets you everything. I've done this myself on math tests when I was a student. When I saw this kind of stuff, I would doodle these triangles up in the corner, and then when I had to answer stuff, I would just look at, you know, opposite over hypotenuse, and there you go. All right, so part of your homework is going to be just filling these in, and the goal is not to just look them up, but to try to do it the way I'm showing you, unless, you know, you got a photographic memory and you can just memorize them. There is another part of your homework where you have to use this information. So I'm going to have to erase, and I'll just run through an example so you can see, you know, what they're getting at. So I'll take this right out of the book. I'll leave those pictures up there because we're probably going to need them. So in the book, you're going to be given some pictures, and they will tell you some information, and other stuff is unknown. That's what the variables are for. Oops. So the directions say to find the exact value of each variable. So that word exact means you're going to have to have those square roots in them. You can't have decimals. Well, look at my triangles. If that's 60, then that's 30. So see this triangle right here? That's this one. And if this is 45, then this is 45. So you see this triangle right here? That would be this one. So we're not going to do everything at once. I would start with the triangle we know the most information in, right? I only know this angle, so I would start with the green triangle because I know a side and an angle, actually a couple of them. So I think we could find A and B just using the green triangle, and then when we're done with those, we could... Well, we'll use that B because it's, it's shared, right? Let's just start. So if I look at this, instead of like trying to think what's A, what's A, what's A, look at the picture and understand we're going to use the trig functions. So I like the 30 degree better. I don't know. You might start from the 60 because that's what the book gave us. So look from the 60. Let's say I want to find A first. Do you see that this would be the adjacent side? And that is the hypotenuse, that's cosine. So nobody tells me, I just have to realize I want to use cosine because I just wanted to find A before I found B. And A is the adjacent side. Now this is going to be kind of weird, but watch how this... In order to do this, the easiest way is like this. Leave this alone. Now look at this. See that cosine of 60? Remember all those things I just erased? That goes here. Well, I erased them, and I don't remember them. Watch how easy this is. See that triangle? Looking from the 60 degrees, the adjacent is 1, and the hypotenuse is 2. So if this is cosine 60 degrees, that is equal to a half. So I can substitute. And now look, this is a proportion. So I can cross multiply, and I get A equals 12. That green's not showing up too well. So there's my first answer, and that is exact, it's not rounded. 
I still need to find B, C, and D. One down. All right, I'm going to do B now. Well, I could use a Pythagorean theorem, right? See that? I could use a Pythagorean theorem, but you already know that. Trig you're probably less sure about, so I'm going to do this with trig again. If I want to know B, and I'm looking from here, this would be opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 60 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. So, now there's more than one way to solve this, so if, if you kind of see another way to do it, that's fine, but I'm just going to go this route. See that sine of 60? Well, what's sine of 60? It would be opposite over hypotenuse. See, that's how you memorize them all. Just know how to draw that picture, and then you can get any one you want. So now i got to cross multiply, so I get 2b is 24 root 3, and if I divide by 2, I have b is 12 root 3, and we can talk about this if you want, but that is the answer, and that is not rounded, that is exact. Okay, now I'm going to actually put that in my picture so you can see it, 12 root 3. I could use trig some more, but I actually am going to kind of cheat. It's not really cheating, but it's just so obvious we want to take advantage of it. We are now shifting our focus to the red triangle, which is a 45, 45, 90. Now, what is true if these two angles are the same? They would be isosceles. And something you learned in geometry is the legs of an isosceles triangle, not the base, the legs, are the same. So if you know that this side is 12 root 3, guess what this side? See, these are the, do you see it? So that's a freebie. And I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to get C. It's just going to have some radicals in there, but it's not bad. So... This squared plus this squared equals this squared, right? D was that. Well, how do you square this? Well, this would be 144, 12 root 3 squared is 12 root 3 times 12 root 3. You can multiply in any order you want, right? I can switch around the order. So how about I change this to 12 times 12 times root 3 root 3. Should be the same answer. So this squared is this squared times this squared. Here's this plus sign. Here it is again, 12 squared times, not plus, root 3 squared, and that equals c squared. So let's see, that'd be uh, 2 carry the 1, 3 carry the 1, 4. Yep. So c squared is 864. And if we're going to go exact, let's try to do this without our calculator. So i got to take a square root. So let's see, does 4 go into there? 2, 1, 6. Yes, 200. Oh, I recognize that number. So this would be root 4, root 2, 16. I know that 2, 16 is 6 cubed. So 2, 16 is divisible by 36. So this would be 6 times the square root of 36 times the square root of 6. So this is 2 times 6 times root 6, which is 12 root 6. So this reduces down to 12 root 6. Um, let's say you don't like that. Let's see if we can do that another way, because I think we can. 
and I'm not sure, but it might turn out a little easier than this. So remember, I, knew, I figured this out from the green triangle, and then the, this was isosceles, and all I'm trying to get is, is uh, C there. So what if I tried using trig? Let's try uh, tangent. See how this is opposite and adjacent? No, I can't use that. Let's use um, sine. Sine of this angle would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. And what was sine of 45? 1 over root 2. Yeah, I think this is going to be a lot nicer. So this gives me C, and this is 12, I'll write it out for you, root 3 times root 2. Well, that is 12 root 6. That was a lot nicer. So what do you know? Trig can be handy. Um, we didn't have to do it, but geometry version was actually much uglier. Trig kind of helped me out here. So that's what you're going to be doing. Um, it's going to give you like slightly different pictures. All of the pictures will be triangles with 30, 60, 90s. 